and welcome to Dino Shed Part 2. And yes, I am wearing the same sweatshirt. This short bit of stainless here is going to come out of the turbo on the uh, driver's side and make a short jog around the exhaust manifold and go out to some flex exhaust pipe that I've ordered to uh, run the exhaust out of the dyno cell. I'm going to put an O2 sensor in it about here and uh, let's go out back see how it fits and uh, I'll show you the small amount of work that I've got done throughout the week. Earlier this week I came out here and had to jack the log pile over with my jack. I stuck a jack up against the side here and pushed it over about four inches so I could get my tanks through. A friend of mine gave them to me. He told me I could have one, so I was planning on 330 gallons, but he decided he didn't need two of them. So I have 660 gallons of water. They'll be teed together in between and the uh, water will be run inside to the pump. Hopefully 660 gallons will get me a long ways. If not, I will be putting some kind of cooling tower or cooling system radiator on it. Earlier today I installed a light and my little control panel. Uh, these were switches that I used for controlling the load to the dyno, but that's all going to change here soon with the big pump. Uh, I just had two water hoses going to it before from the house, and now I've got 14,000 gallons an hour. so. Uh, Water should not be an issue. These switches here for turning on the computer, fuel, ignition, here's my start. Throttle is here. I had a PC in here, but um, I'm just gonna bring laptops in and out because I don't want to leave a PC out here in the shed. It gets kind of wet out here. Uh, throttle cable and uh, my little umbilical cord for the electronics, communicating with the motor and the dyno. The, uh, the small one, the, the tan gray colored one, is uh, serial communication to the mega squirt, and the one that's wrapped in the braid is all the communications and controls for the dyno. So we're going to come out of the turbo, like so, go around. I'm happy with that. So I'm going to mark it. I'm going to put the O2 sensor right there. I had a commenter ask me how I can afford all my turbo stuff, and my answer to him was, I'm cheap. I gave a short description, but here's an example of what I really mean by being cheap. I need a pair of O2 sensor bunks for this project, and they're only $10 a piece. Works out to, you know, 20 bucks for the pair, plus shipping, probably $25. Um, you think, okay, 25 bucks, that's not a big deal. Well, this is an M18 by, I think, 1.5 metric nut. I got these from McMaster Car, McMaster.com. They cost less than 50 cents a piece. So right there, I just saved 25 bucks. Now I'm gonna do a little to them. I'm gonna stick it in the bridge port, and I'm gonna turn this lip down so it's round, so I can drill a hole, stick it in the hole. It'll be located. I can weld it up. Now, so it's gonna take me about five minutes to do that. So in five minutes, I'm gonna save myself 25 dollars. That's just like making 25 dollars in five minutes. It works out to I think 300 dollars an hour. I don't make that kind of money at work. I doubt you guys do. If you do, we don't want to hear about it in the comments. But anyway, I'm going to stick this in here, save myself some money. You guys can watch.
these are O2 sensor bung. All right, here are the finished bungs. I need to uh, make some holes in this tubing to uh, weld them in. I had said I was going to drill them out, but this is stainless and uh, it's a pain to drill. So we're just going to cut them out with the torch. Okay, I went out to the auto parts store and picked up the flex tubing that I ordered. It's 4 inch ID by 25 foot long. Should be more than enough to do this project, so I'll have some left over for something else later on. It's nice and flexible, it stays in position, so hopefully it'll be easy to route and won't require a whole lot of supports to keep it from falling down. Um, this is the tubing that I'm using coming out of the turbos. It's 3.5 inch OD. This is 4 inch ID. I have a half inch there gap quarter on both sides to uh, to fill. I'm not certain if I'm going to need to or not. We'll see. Uh, but I'm kind of leaning towards just packing it with fiberglass. I don't know how well that'll work. Worst thing that happen is it'll blow it out. Anyway, let's take it back to the shed, mock it up, and uh, cut a piece off. Okay, so I have the little short exhaust pieces on the turbos. That one is just to straight out this one to make a little more room and so I can get at the motor. This one makes a little bend and points down. I have the exhaust flex tubing installed. It uh, looks like it's going to stay put on its own but if it doesn't I'm going to weld some nuts into it and put some bolts to pinch the rigid tubing that's there. Um, it's really tight in here, so I'm sure I'm going to have to roll the thing back and forth uh, to get from side to side and around all this hot exhaust. Um, but it looks like it's going to stay there. Um, I have a pretty good gap, you can see. Uh, I'm going to try packing it with fiberglass. Either I'm going to start with loose fiberglass, and if that doesn't work, then I'll use fiberglass rope to pack those holes. But hopefully there won't be a whole lot of pressure in there and the tubes are far enough down that I shouldn't get a lot of uh, gas escaping. Well I think that's enough for Dino Shed Part 2. I've had enough for the weekend. If you're working on a similar project or some other car project you think I might be interested in, post a link in the comments below. I'd love to see it. Thanks for watching.